Okay, so tell us the premise of Cry Macho. Okay, Cry Macho, um, he's a rodeo guy, a, a cowboy that um, has to do a last job for his, for his boss, ex-boss, and he has to travel to Mexico to find his son and bring him back to the States. Okay. And in the road, of course, they're going to uh, relate and he's going to become a better man just because he loves this little boy. They connect. Right. They truly connect. Okay. And how did you get the role of Letta? Or did you have to audition for it? Or No, yeah, I have to audition. It was during COVID, so I had to do a self-tape first and then uh, a call, a Zoom call. And... It was awesome. <laughs> I remember the day that they called me to say that I was in. I couldn't stop shouting and screaming and running <laughs> through the house. Uh, it was really cool. No, it's pretty sure it's exciting for you. It's an exciting moment. Yeah, it is pretty excited. And to work with a legend is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, he is a big legend in Hollywood, so. Yes. Was it hard for you to step in those shoes in that character, or was it pretty much easy to do? If it was easy to do the role, yeah. But did you find it challenging? Did you hard to step in those shoes? I, I find I found it really challenging and very fun to do. Actually, I I must say it was the most fun audition to do, and and I had so much fun doing it. And then and then working with him, it was even better. So yeah, it was challenging but fun. Right. Well, that's that's good. Yeah, both mix it both. That's good. That's a good thing. Did you know about the book or read the book before, you know, getting into the role to better know your character or? It was really hard to find the novel, actually. Uh, but immediately the, the producers told me not to worry about it because it was going to be different. So it's just based on it, but the movie is something else. So okay. I, 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 I didn't have to, and I couldn't find it, to be honest. It was, it, was, it was very fast when I booked it and then to fly to New Mexico to shoot. And, uh, and it wouldn't, I wouldn't get it. It was, it was gonna take time to get it. Yeah, that, that was my I next question. If the, if, that was my next question, if the character from the book is different from the character in the movie, but you already answered that question. <laughs> I answered that question already. <laughs> So how was it like working with Clint Eastwood, a very famous actor and great director? It was amazing. It's amazing to work with people that you you love and, and admire and then see that they're human beings, like super connected and caring and loving. And there was not a huge ego. Uh, and I, was, I felt so relieved and it was great. And, and I think it was one of my favorite experiences in my whole career. What did you take away from your time there? Like what experiences did you take away from time on set and just being a part of the film? I think what I liked the most was the, um, the atmosphere on set. It was like, very caring and respectful. I think it was the most respectful set I've ever been on. And mm -hmm. uh, everyone just loved to work with him and, and they are ready to drop everything to go if, they, if, if he calls. Right. And, and I love that. I was like, how can this man with all these years, after all these years can still make it act, direct and produce a movie during COVID? Yeah. It was like, it blew my mind. And, and he, he has such an amazing energy but also he has a great crew with him. Like he knows exactly with mm -hmm. whom to work. So there's many of them that have been with him for 36 years some. And, and I don't know, like, I will, I will, I'm guessing, but I can say that probably only five in the whole crew were working with him for the first time. All the rest, wow. they already know him. So right. it's, it's a very beautiful family. And it was an honor to be part of it. Yeah. So you're very active on social media, like Instagram and Twitter and whatnot. So are you excited for your fans to see the movie and know their response to your film? I am super excited. I can't wait to watch it and, and, and I can't wait to see what they think. And uh, yeah, especially now that it's going to 
be released on theaters that it was something that i was not expecting and to know that it's it's great and i love it so thank you COVID, that you allowed it and um yeah i can wait i'm, I'm like counting the days <laughs> well i'm looking forward to it i i watched you work on narcos so i know you from that series and then i saw the trailer for this movie and i'm very excited to see it too because i like clint eastwood too so i'm looking forward to checking it out in the theaters it's amazing so how much of a challenge was it to jump from Spanish speaking films to now an American English speaking film? Was it more difficult for you to get the language down for the film or? Well, yeah, that's huge for me, but uh, that was something that I wanted to do for a long time. And, and I'm from Chile um, right. and, I, and I moved five years ago to the States. So I can say it wasn't, it, it didn't take me too long to start working, which I really appreciate. And uh, and it's been like I've been learning and it keeps getting better and better. I think I still have an accent, of course, but I. No, I, but you speak it pretty good, though. So you're doing good. You're doing good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. But I, yes, I, I embrace my accent and I work with it as, as much as I can. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, I watched you on Narcos and you do a great job in the show. Thank Was you. it easier getting jobs, you know, for American TV and films now that you've been in Narcos Mexico, or is it still a challenge for you to get those kind of well, roles? I, I can't say it's easy. It's never easy. But um, but of course, Narcos was a very huge um, first step for me to, mm -hmm. to start working in the States. And and yeah, after that, I've, I've, I've been booking stuff, so I'm grateful. Uh, baby baby but, steps. Uh, yeah, baby steps. One step and, at a time. Uh, what? Say that again. One step at a time. One step at a time, but but it's been very challenging and, and a beautiful path to to leave. Sometimes, of course, an actor's life is not easy. Sometimes because you have to wait for someone to pull you, uh, and to that uh, to say that want you to work with them. Uh, but also now I'm 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 writing, I'm producing, and um, so I stay busy, and mm -hmm. then things happen and they start they keep happening, and that's amazing. That's a, that's a good thing. The avalanche just keeps coming. That's good. Um, you're also in the show Party of Five, which was also a big hit. How much did it mean to you to be part of that project that, you know, focused on the plight of many American, uh, Mexican-American families? Uh, for me, it's, it, it has been very beautiful to embrace the Latin American country and be a face of Latin American country. And, and in the States. And it was very harsh that that role because it's so sad uh, what was happening with with the families in the border. And um, it was it was very challenging in an emotional way. Um, it was huge. And, and I went to Tijuana and I and I and I tried to do stuff with with different foundations to 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 meet real families uh, on the border. And with that, immigration problems and it was heartbreaking but it was great to be on a show that that was acknowledging all that and mm -hmm. and the the strength of the family to to be able to stay together no matter what uh, and all the 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 crew the director directors and the producer of that show they were all a gift, a real gift. They're amazing people, and it was beautiful to be on it. What can you tell us about the charity work you do for Para La Confianza? Um, well, that that's a foundation that works with uh, abused kids and mm -hmm. try to to regain their confidence and uh, and help them heal. Uh, for me, that's huge. Um, I think it's it's very sad to know that many kids are being abused every day, and, yeah, I and agree. even though for like now it's easier to see it, like we mm -hmm. already were talking about it, we're seeing it more, but before it was something that was very normalized, and 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 I think in our generation as well, there were many kids abused and no one talked about it. And it was like something that happened in every family. It was 
something that mm -hmm. that it was kind of normal uh right. the uncles were like that the, the blah 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 uh so for me to to put that on on for the front page and and to talk and to acknowledge that this happens and we have to stop it is very very important how, how can we get how can other others involved people get involved in the uh foundation like your fans and whatnot well there's many foundations not only that one i i i worked on that one but i also worked in many different notes and and now in chile i'm i'm trying to 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 create more awareness and and to put a lot of uh, strength or, or focus on, on the foster families. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a huge, huge hole in the foster system in Chile. And um, so as civilians, a, a way to help and really help is to get involved in foster families and create awareness on that. We have to change the whole system. It's mm -hmm. huge and it's something that is happening and we're doing work to push for that change to happen soon. But meanwhile, as civilians, there's things that we can do. And, and you can reach different foundations and see how they're helping in, in their ways. But if you if you open your heart and your house to a kid that in need, mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing. Now, there's so many things that help uh, a kid's development when they're in the loving family and all and when right. they understand what a loving family could be because they don't mm -hmm. have the they don't have the um, they say the they don't have the the, the example you know mm -hmm. right the role models to show them the, the way and models, what's, you, yeah. yeah is there any upcoming projects you could talk about that you're going to be in soon or writing or anything that you can uh, talk about <laughs> Well, I just shoot a movie here in Chile that I wrote, and that's going to be out next year. Hopefully, we're in the in the um, post production now. It's directed by Fran Ale Francisca Alegría. We wrote it together, and it's called the Ca the cow that sang a song about the future. And I hope you're going to see it in it's many interesting years. title. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's an interesting, interesting movie. It's very different. I hope you loved it. Um, um, and there's also a TV show, a Mexican TV show that I'm going to be in it. I'm, I'm playing a lot of Mexicans lately and Puerto Ricans <laughs> as well. <laughs> but I love that because I've been able to, to really connect to Latin American culture, like the whole right. of it. And we have so many things in common. Uh, so it's, it's just beautiful to join forces and... and, and yeah grow together um what else what else that's for now i think you sure yeah. is there anything and you I want to say to your movie now but i that's something that i can't talk about yet <laughs> yeah you don't want to yeah <laughs> is there anything you want to say to your fans all over the world and people who support you i uh, yes just Please go to the theaters, watch Cry Macho. You're going to love it. Uh, it's an amazing and beautiful and moving uh, film. I haven't watched it yet, but I read the script and I love the director. So Plus I'm, you're in it. So you were in the movie too. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> fantastic. I uh, can't wait for you all to see it. Okay. Well, muchas gracias for your time. Much thanks for your time today to sit down with me doing this interview. Really gracias. appreciate it. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.